now. What is Ian prized by contrast? He prizes the one uh, regular Buzz Swole, Ooh. which uh, could matter. Uh, this matchup is different from what we've seen the Zora control deck face so far, where it's very hyper aggressive and they're going to be taking knockouts left and right. And Isaiah might be forced to kind of play the knockout game as well. Yeah, and it looks like he's actually, Isaiah's actually led with the Sableye uh, as well, which is probably not ideally what he wants to lead with necessarily. He probably would like to say that for a later turn where the limitation actually is strongest, but it's fine as a lead because he does see a rainbow energy. He can just maybe slow Ian Rob for a couple of turns whilst he does his own setup. Yeah, well, one important thing to note is that Sableye is not weak to fighting. So if Ian Rob has the Buzzwell GX and the energy and a way to retreat the Marsh Shadow that he started, which would, is unfortunate, by the way, uh, he won't be able to like take a quick knockout on a Zora and then put 30 on another Zora. He'd kind of have to work for a little bit. Yeah, no, that, that's, a, that's a very good point, actually. Now, we do see there that there was a, there was a Tapu Lele played that uh, Wanda Tag did grab the Cynthia. Uh, it was actually grabbed the, the Tapu Lele off an Ultra Ball, and it, like, I believe that's the Articuno GX that got discarded. So, obviously, not really for this matchup, so just going to discard it straight away. Well, uh, speaking with, I spoke with Isaiah in Portland, which is expanded, uh, completely different format, but he played pretty much the same deck. He was on Azora Control, he played an Articuno. Uh, his Articuno was in there for the Buzzful GX matchup. So if your opponent loads up a big Buzzful, because that's what they're going to do, you attach all your energy to the first one because you're not going to attack them. You're not going to trigger B-String. So they load that up, and you go, all right, Articuno GX, bring it active, Rainbow Energy, discard all your energy. I just bought myself like three turns. So perhaps then do you think he discarded it just because he doesn't know that Ian's playing Buzzwall? It, it could be, uh, but it also could be that his hand was just better. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that makes sense, obviously. Uh, we didn't to see how many Rescue Stretcher Isaiah is playing, because if he's playing one or two, which I imagine he is, then he could get that back at some point if he still needs to do that. Um, but uh, yeah, if not, it's a bit, of a, a bit of a shame that he has to discard that. Well, Let's he see. also has a Rangaroo to play around with all this stuff. Uh, this is a deck where you basically have access to your entire yeah. deck throughout the game. Yes, this is very true. And he does play the one Rescue Stretcher as well, so yeah, maybe perhaps he can just sort of spring that out of nowhere. Maybe even catch Ian off guard thinking, you know, oh, it's the guy that I'm safe, and all of a sudden, surprise, Rescue Stretcher. <laughs> yeah. All right, and it'll be interesting. It does not look like a Guzma coming down from Ian here, so he might not even be able to attack this turn one, and that's really what you want to do with Buzzwell. You want to make all your energy attachments count against this deck. Yeah, you, you, you really, really do, and <laughs> Ian could just pass after drawing those, drawing those cards, so uh, I'd say he's got to be smiling about that. Yeah, well, one thing we haven't really seen from players yet is uh, playing the game where I'm not going to really bench any Pokemon that you can counter catch her up and leave active. Well, yeah, I mean, that is the other part of it because um, the whole one of the whole strengths of the Zorak control deck is that it can, it has more access to cards that just stall things and buy you a few extra turns and just make your opponent waste a few more resources. But if you play smart against it, you can just limit the effects that those stall cards have on you to the point where it doesn't become as much of an issue. All right, looks like getting a Zorak GX from either Timer Ball or Ultra Ball here for Isaiah Williams. Yep. And from this, so obviously we'll be able to do trades here, a couple more cards, and so it'll be interesting what he opts to discard here, because he's got a Pal Pad, a Max Potion. Looks like a Pal Pad is what he opts to discard there. Finds another Zora and a Professor Realms Lecture. Yeah, so it was a little bit awkward there, because you never really want to discard Pal Pad this early. Uh, granted, you can bring it back, but Team Skullgrunt is a card that could surprise your opponent, especially right after turn one and when he lilies to draw eight. Is that, hold on, I just need to double check something to make sure I saw that right. Was that a custom catcher I saw being discarded? Yes, it is. Ian Robb is playing for custom catcher. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, so for those of you who don't know, <laughs> custom catcher is a new card out of Lost Thunder that uh, is very reminiscent of Puzzle of Time or even past Pokey Drawer, where you could play it, just one of them, you draw until you have three cards. Yeah. It's a pretty good effect. It is. But then if you play two of them, you just get to bring up one of your opponent's Pokemon for free. Yeah, it's a Pokemon catcher like before the Arata <laughs> or like a current Pokemon catcher, autom catcher, automatic heads. It is a very, very cool card. And uh, wow, I think he's Ian's the first person we've seen playing it, actually. 
yeah, uh, I, I love it. Um, this is the kind of deck where you're able to do it because you can Alola Ninetales, just get the two Custom Catcher. And we see this amazing turn right here. Beast Energy, Choice Band, and the Diancie coming down with the Guzma, bringing up that Zorak GX for the knockout. Ian Rob already down to four prizes. Isaiah Williams is really going to be put on the back foot here. Broken. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was a no, but that was absolutely incredible turn from Ian. That's yeah, yeah. Well, we can't, really can't argue with that. Yeah, uh, Beast Energy Prism Star is a card that just an auto include in every Ultra Beast deck. Uh, its favorite partner is this Buzzwool GX. It does so much damage. Yeah, it does. Uh, Beast Energy essentially acting like an extra choice band when it's attached to. Um, an Ultra Beast, as well as a Rainbow Energy, actually, because once it's attached, it provides any color. Not that it ne necessarily matters here, but yeah, just that extra 30 damage, being able to reach for that big knockout and making even Jet Punch, you know, going to one hit KO territory is absolutely insane. And But look at Ian's, Isaiah's turn there, which literally just attached double colorless to Slugma and pass. Yeah, uh, really on the back foot here, losing that Zorark uh, was his only source of draw power. and. If you remember watching this deck, <laughs> even just last round, the only draw cards they have are Cynthia. Uh, they play a full four Professor Elms Lecture and a bunch of other tech supporters, but their only real draw is limited to those four cards without Zorark. Yeah, exactly, and uh, that's the whole way this deck works is that once you have multiple Zoroks out, you can, as you mentioned earlier, kind of see what you need every single turn and sort of pick the exactly the right card to see you through. But that's really not going to be an option right now because, <laughs> I mean... Bolswell's doing 80-30 with Jet Punch right now. It's just, it's just too much damage. Yeah. Too, too much damage and Asaya's not drawing enough to actually contend against this. So it looks like he's seen something there. And this is where Ian doesn't really need to overcommit. No, he really he has those three energy on that buzzwool. That's all he needs. He could save the rest of his energy. Yeah. Uh, custom catcher is a good hit from Asaya there. He was able to bring up the Deancey. Counter catcher. Yeah, it, oh, yeah, sorry. Ca ca <laughs> counter catcher. Yes, sir, you're right. I'm sure we'll get that messed up in this game plenty more times. Yes, sir, they do. It's a very, very CC. So I yeah. Say, uh, <laughs> but, uh, oh, but there's the Guzman in return from, from Ian. So. And, oh, this is a double knockout. No Zora in play. And... I would have to think this is a prompt concession from Isaiah here. Uh, he's going to draw a card just to see, j just because you never know. Um, but, yeah, I don't really think. No, there it is. Wow. Wow. And that is the power of Buzzwool GX. And Ian just getting that beast energy off that Cynthia was insane. That's... I've never, I, don't think, I can't remember the last time I saw a Buzzball GX put in that much work. It's, it's funny because for, yeah, for a while people were so you know, latched onto the non GX Buzzball. They thought, ah, oh, this card's you know, amazing, get so much value out of the attack, especially when they have four prizes left. Even if you don't, you can just KO most things with the second attack using B strings and stuff. But yeah, kind of just being reminded here just of how strong the GX Buzzball actually is and why it was a former international championship winning deck. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, looking to see if Ian can pull out a repeat of Buzzwell GX winning this event. Uh, really looking strong there, especially if he keeps playing against these Zora control decks. Yeah. And it's uh, interesting as well how you know the previous favored variant of Buzzwell was what was Buzzwell like Rock because like Rock being an insane card in its own right with an insane ability and GX attack that just put in so much work against so many things. But, you know, in this list here, just thinking, nah, you know, I don't need Lycan Rock, man. I just, you know, Nine Tails is good enough for me. I can just... Custom Catcher? Yeah, exactly. Just Who needs Bloodthirsty Eyes? Yeah, let's uh, just search out all the stuff I need. And then, not only that, but because you are playing Nilo than Nine Tails, then you also have, like, the additional option of getting, if you don't need Custom Catcher, you can just get something else. Uh, maybe, you know, some items to set you up more, beast strings, or you can even just attach to it and start doing 70-30 snipes or, you know, knock out an Ultra Beast. Like, the versatility, as well as the power that Alola Nine Tails GX gives you is... Rid ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the combo with Brooklet Hill as well, just getting that Alolan Vulpix makes your deck super consistent. And for Buzzful GX2 is just pushing over the top of I'm aggressive, I am gonna do this, yeah. I'm gonna jet punch you all the time. Yeah, it, it, it is, as uh, Ross Gilbert might say, over the top good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it kind of reminds me of a deck that was pretty popular during the North American International Championships last season, where it was the Buswell Garboder deck, yes. where four 
Buzz full GX and four B strings, and I'm just gonna play the spread game until you knock me out. Then I'm gonna B string a bunch of times and like just overwhelm you. Yeah, and and then and then I'm also going to stop using your abilities so that you can't you can't make a comeback as well. Right. So here we are going into game two. Looks like uh, obviously I say I will be going first, starting off with a uh, Zora and Slugma. But wait, does he? Oh, yeah, okay, he's got a Cynthia. I was going to say, if he has no other draw supports, that would be a horrendous start because that Zora would definitely be going down. Yeah, double colorless there. We might even see just a retreat. Uh, try to save that Zora because it does get just one shot by this Jet Punch. Just taking a quick knockout for one energy. Yeah, it doesn't even need a Beast Energy, of course, the Zora having that fighting weakness. Um, uh, Saya really needs to see a few more basics off of uh, the Cynthia right now. Yeah, and the way they built this deck, too, is if you don't get that turn one Professor Elms Lecture, your deck is just very so bad. much worse. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Looking and at his prize cards there, he has a, the Gladian prize as long with an Oranguru and Palpad. Yeah, and one of the Professor Elms Lectures he plays as well, so have a slightly lesser likelihood. Uh, meanwhile, from oh, the inside, is yeah, nowhere near as bad as nice sort of spread or like one. one yeah, Switch and Guzma in there could be cards that come up later, but. Ian's trying not to get the later. Yeah, he's yeah. trying to win now. Yes, exactly. And if he's winning now, he's getting those cards out the prizes yeah. anyway. And uh, wow, no other Zorua here. Wow. <laughs> if Ian just has a natural custom catcher in his hand, that would be insane. I bet that's what he wishes he has if he doesn't have one. There is a unit energy, which he could attach, but then that means that he couldn't attach a beast energy, which would actually get a KO on the Oranguru if he wanted to reach for that. Is it looks like he has one custom catcher in his hand, but not two. Looks like he also has an Ultra Ball that he's eyeing down playing. He's, a, oh, he's really agonizing over this. He could get something like the... Oh, I love it. <gasps> uh, Eliza? Is that... Uh, 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 Lysia, I think. Lysia. Yeah. Uh, just being able to search your deck for two Prism Star cards. This card is insane <laughs> in combination with Buzzful GX because you get the Beast Energy and the Diancy, you do a ton of damage starting from turn one, and to have that card in your opening hand, just insane. Yeah, it's uh, we, we saw it being played uh, in one of the Buzzwall Lycan, Buzzwall Lycan Rock lists earlier by uh, Gabriel, and uh, he opted not to play it for, for some reason, but I mean, you see its power here, just able to get your two best damage boosters essentially straight away, and uh, that uh, Oranguru is now going to go down. Yeah, uh, and with the other one in the prizes, that means only Rescue Stretcher left to bring it back. So Isaiah's really going to have to work on his game plan against yeah. this deck. Uh, probably a deck that he wasn't expecting a lot of just because, well, Malamar is pretty popular, so I'll let all the Buzzwell play Malamar first, and then I'll play against the Malamar <laughs> later on. Yeah, exactly. But, I mean, if the Buzzwell make it past the Malamar, then you end up in situations like this. <laughs> and, I, gosh, that is yeah, really, really tricky situation. Uh, here for Isaiah. He does have the Professor Elms Lecture. That's the one saving grace, I guess. So he won't he won't lose next turn. He will be able to get out all of the Pokemon he needs. Oh, and the head is on the Crushing Hammer as well. It's pretty big. So that that Beast Energy is going to hit the Lost Zone. So I actually love Ian's play last turn, too, of not benching the Diancy Prism. Uh, you already had the knockout with Beast Energy. So why would you bench a Pokemon that has two retreat, which you just turned on Countercatcher for your opponent. You're really going to have to play from behind if that card gets brought up time and time again. Yeah. So just really smart play, and it shows that Ian knows exactly what he's up against. Yeah, yeah Ian, no no stranger to these uh, sort of, you know, higher stakes uh, later rounds like, of rounds Swiss. He's uh, been in this, these exact sort of situations before, and uh, he knows exactly the right place to make at uh, any given time. And... I mean, now he could potentially have a really strong next turn. Again, if he finds a double custom catcher, he can bring up another Zora and just attach an energy, take another, another double knockout, and already he'll be, that means he will be so far ahead. Well, yeah, that's pretty easy with just the Ultra Ball, which I believe he still has in his hand. Uh, Ultra Ball for the Lola Ninetales GX gets custom catcher, which he already has one in his hand as well. And uh, not only that, but... Uh, but it's like uh, so I actually had the rescue stretcher straight away, and oh, he plays the max potion, so that double knockout turn is uh, no longer uh, viable for him. But uh, I mean, 
he gets, Ian can still have a very strong turn, even with just K one the Zora, it's still one less that uh, he has to deal with later. Yeah, uh, it could benefit him to actually not be as aggressive too, because playing that alone Nine Tails GX does mean someone with two retreat costs is going to be on the field, uh, and that's not what you want because you just want Buswell to be your only guy. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Buswell is going to be what uh, really carries him through there, and actually, you oh just go yes. yes, I love this play, Professor Kakui off the Wonder Tag with the Diancy in your hand and the unit energy he has as well. That is a knockout on the Slugma. Yeah. Put 30 on the Zora, and then next turn you just do the custom catcher play. Yeah, exactly. And this means that uh, although he may not be able to stop Asaya from getting out as many Zoras as he'd like, he does prevent the smooth over from being able to pick exactly what he wants to get off the trade, which is like, a really big hindrance in and of itself, and is a really great disruptive play. And uh, showing the power of Professor Kukui there, Team Skullgrunt does hit a unit energy out of Ian's hand, but his hand is looking pretty good. I mean, he's got a load of nine tails. That's all he really needs. Yeah, and and does oh, but Asaya passes no as well. No Zorark here. This Alolan nine tails will demolish Isaiah's field, Good. taking two Zora with it. Goodness gracious me, this is this is going to be potentially a very, very swift 2-0 if Asaya does not find something next turn. All right, there is the double custom catcher off Mysterious Guidance. I, 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 I love this so much. <laughs> this is really... I, I remember when I saw a custom catcher first being, and even the judges <laughs> having to pick up to read it. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, uh, Lost Thunder introduced a couple cards with this kind of play style. There's also the mixed herbs, I believe, uh, reminiscent of Pokey Healer. Oh, yes, yes, that's very, that's very true. So another one that does more. I think if you play two at the same time, it heals like 90 in a special yeah. condition, doesn't it? Um, and it's always interesting when you, we see cards like that being played. And is that just another pass? It is another pass. Oh, there's, yeah, no. Jet Punch. What? <laughs> there's... 100 damage and then 30 to the Zora on the bench, meaning another custom catcher yeah. with the Alolan Ninetales that he could play down again. He, he doesn't need a, need a custom catcher. He can just announce Jet Punch again and win. But he has oh, got an yeah. Ultra Ball. <laughs> So uh, Asaya has been saved, but I honestly think it's too little too late at this point. You can get one Zoro arc, but, but like, then what, you know? Yeah, and uh, this is... So we've seen uh, this deck, like, first start out in the North American International Championships with Tord Reklev, uh getting second. And he... Buswell was very popular. Buswell Garb, as we mentioned before. He actually played two copies of Weakness Policy. This is one card that these players... Uh, chose to opt out of their list because they're like, well, Buswell's not going to be that prevalent. Yeah. And Ian's capitalizing on that and is just a quick uh, jet punch away from starting out 5-1 and one at this tournament yeah. with Buzzsoul, Ninetales, Custom Catcher. Yeah, that is absolutely insane. I think the other important thing to mention on the uh, weakness policy point, though, is that we have seen a lot more people playing Lysander Labs as well. So maybe, that is true. So maybe people are thinking it doesn't make much sense to play that if I'm going to, you know, kind of have two things that are conflicting with each other. Sure, they, I can just not use use one or the other depending on the matchup, but I just don't have the space. That's probably the logic behind that one. But uh, yeah, either way, just wow, like that's... There's no way that this buzzball is getting carried next turn. So even with all of this, all Ian needs to do is find another lower than nine tails to go double cover custom catcher win, like you said. Yeah, uh, and it's looking like a counter catcher in Isaiah's hand could prove fruitful for him, bringing up the Diancy. But then that opens up Guzma as an out. Yeah, so it's just not great, no matter which way you stir it. So in this situation. You really don't want to scoop. There's so much time left, no. and this is your last game. You're down to your last two prizes for your opponent. You really got to try to do everything yeah. you can to you, steal a victory away. Yeah, you lose literally nothing. Even if it's like a 0.0001% chance that you win, there's still there's no reason to scoop to concede at this point, especially because you're already a game down, and like you said, there's so much time on the clock. So, so it'll be interesting. He chooses to use the custom catcher on the Diancy. The counter catcher. Counter catcher. Yeah, see, I told you <laughs> yeah, I'd do yeah. it. See, now, now we're even. <laughs> <laughs> but that opens up Guzma as an out. That means Tapu Lele if he plays more than... Yeah, he plays the two Tapu Lele. So that opens up Tapu Lele. That opens up Ultra Balls. Uh, that opens up 
really anything that gets that, those type of cards. Yeah. Uh, it even opens up a little Nine Tails to get Ultra the Ball, <laughs> yeah. Ultra Ball to get Tabulele to get Guzma. Yeah, I I would be shocked if he didn't have the win here. To be honest, I think he's just gonna make sure maybe just there is there's energy choice and there choice band switch. switch. And then a Cynthia. All right, so he still needs Custom Catcher yes. to take the game this turn, but it's still looking very good for him. Yeah, because I mean, all he needs is the Alona Nine Tails. So either that was just just naturally draw the two Custom Catchers. It's uh, the the odds. Wouldn't that be a way to win it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that I'll would draw my two Custom Catchers. Yeah, that would be a incredible way to win it. Uh, let's see here, Cynthia for six. Does he hit it? Three, four, five. Six? Oh, uh, no. No, it looks like a couple B-strings. Those are cards that you're never going to use in this matchup. No, never. I mean, it, it is it is the thing, though, of, you know, even you know, regardless of anything else, Ian is still in such a favorable position that it almost doesn't even matter. This buzzwall still isn't getting KO'd next turn. There is no way that Asaya can do enough damage to KO it. So, yeah, I, I, Asaya is so, so stuck at this point that I really, I would... I, I would say I'll do something ridiculous uh, if he wins, but uh, like knowing po Pokemon, I'm not. That's not. <laughs> like, I'm not willing to go that far on that risk. Yeah, uh, really. His only out probably is a big Articuno GX play uh, to try to buy himself a little bit more time, uh, maybe in combination with something like a Team Skull Grunt to really just get all the energy options out of Ian's hand and field. But that's asking a lot, especially when you only have two Zorark in play. Yeah. He need to, uh, he need to get see the Rainbow Energy, the Articuno, and a way to get the Tapu Lele out of the active. Well, the Articuno has Legendary Ascent. Does. Oh yes, it does. It can bring itself active. Yeah. Right? But so he needs the Articuno and a Rainbow Energy essentially. Articuno Rainbow, but then you still have to play with what your opponent has in their hand. Yeah. Just attach. All right, I'll Jet Punch for 50 or no, not even more than 50, 80. Uh, it, it's really not looking good for yeah. Isaiah here. Yeah, and then 80 would double to 160, and as long as he had something to bring up to the damage of rock, that would still be a KO, yeah, so... Oh, goodness, goodness gracious me. Oh, no, I think he traded in the two Zorark GX. Unless, no, that's the Articuno in his hand, right? Yeah, there is the Articuno. Bring yes. it up. Legendary, Legendary Ascent. Ascent. He does not have the Rainbow Energy, though, and remember, they only play two. So I need to ride, ride his luck here, because uh, nothing else is going to bail him out of the situation. I, I forget if it was game one or this game, but uh, he prized a rainbow and a double colorless. That's, uh, I mean, if, it, if that's this game, then... I, I think it was game one. Yeah. But uh, it, it, this is going to be a big Cynthia from Isaiah here. He needs a lot of help. Yeah, he needs a lot of help, and... Uh, and again, like you said, even if he has the perfect turn this turn, it is there's still so much he can do to win, especially because his hand wasn't disrupted. It's just not good shape. Yeah, so no rainbow in the prizes for Isaiah there. So he does have a little bit of a good chance to hit it off Cynthia and maybe one trade left. And there <gasps> is the rainbow it. energy. Wow. Even has a max potion as well. Could be something that would prove useful. He could not have asked for a better Cynthia draw if he tried. That is exactly what he needs to see. There's right, Rainbow. There, there it is, Rainbow. And we will see a Cold Crush GX. Discard all energy from both active Pokemon. Uh, one of the ways that you really combat this Buswell GX. And I, I don't know if we're going to see a 6-1 to one comeback, but it, it's he's, possible. He's agonizing a lot over this Max Potion. That's interesting. Maybe he's thinking that he needs to save it for later, but if he doesn't play it, that gives Ian an out to win next turn, so... Yeah, uh, just an Alolan Ninetales gets the double custom catcher, and you attach an energy and deal 160, so there's the Max Potion, there's the Cold Crush GX, now action is back on Ian. Yeah, so that was the that was the perfect turn that Asaya needed to, to not lose, essentially, and so now he can maybe make some semblance of an attempt at a comeback. But now again, uh, Ian just attaches one energy and the pressure is already somewhat back on. Yeah, 80 damage right away. And it actually, with the 10 damage from the rainbow, would take a two-hit knockout on Articuno GX with 170 HP. Wow, it would as well. That's, that's I think incredible. that's why he was probably agonizing the Max Potion. Because he's like, well, I'm going to probably get the Max Potion this Articuno next turn anyway. That, that all makes sense now. Um, 
yeah, gosh, that's um, this, no matter no matter which way uh, Asaya played it, he would have had some chance of like losing out regardless. I think I think at this point, you just yeah, I, I don't even know what I'd do if I, if I was in that situation. It is uh, thinking about it that way, it is a, a very tough call to make. But of course, that, but these high levels of Pokemon are full of these sorts of tough calls, and uh, you've got to decide one way or the other. And uh, that's, that's why these guys are up there and we're back here. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there it is. Jet Punch, 80 damage, 30 on probably a Zoroark. Yeah. Because, uh, again, that would put it in range for... Um, I don't know if uh, Ian plays any more Kukui's, but if he does, then that, would, that with a Jet Punch would be That would be great, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... Back to Asaya, and he's got a couple of uh, Professor Elm's lecture he can use as trade fodder. So yeah, we also see Crushing Hammer as well. Uh, I believe two copies, so he can hit one of those, get rid of the energy, but then just an energy off the top would seal the victory. It's, it's not good no matter which, again, not good no matter which way you look at it. What is he going to do? There's oh, he has got two Crushing Hammers, so he actually yeah. has two chances at hitting this one. And, and he gets there's the, the heads. One. Cool. So again, that that's sort of at least part of the way he needs to go in order to try and just stop himself from losing here. Didn't didn't even need to play. He had the plumeria as well, which he could have played if all yeah. else failed. So uh, that energy was going regardless. All right, Isaiah using Brooklet Hill, checking to see what resources he has left in his deck. It's always something that you should do. Uh, just having the access to free information. Even if you look through your deck from your first Elms and you memorize your prizes and know what to do, you're playing a very like intensive game. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a control deck that's always going to be playing from behind. And you're going to probably like forget, like, well, do I have like three Crushing Hammer left or do I have two? Like, okay, well, let's make sure. Like, yeah. it's just free to use. Why not use it? Yeah, yeah absolutely. That is the. I'm sure that is what uh, will be going through Asaya's mind right now. That and what do I do about this Articuno in the active? Because there are pretty much no more healing cards available to uh, Asaya, and that makes that Articuno such a liability. And yeah, uh, we could see... Oh, he has an Acerola. Yeah, Wonder Tag for an Acerola could be the option he's left with here. That might be the only one, yeah, because uh, that's I didn't, didn't realize that was there, actually, because uh, when he was looking through the deck, but... I guess he hasn't played it yet. So yeah, there it is, Acerola. Uh, that is the one healing card that he has access left to. So the Articuno will, will be picked up. And again, Asaya buys himself just one more turn to try and mount some kind of comeback. Yeah, that's basically what this deck is. Like, you just survive until you get that perfect combination of your opponent using all their resources, and you bring up a guy that can attack like Diancie and just hope it's good enough. Yeah, Acerola, up goes the Articuno. Then into the active goes Tapu Lele GX. That's going to get traded away. It's done its job now. So. Oh, that's not a good trade right here. No. Seeing more Zoroks. Oh, that's a double colorless. That double colorless could be good to put some pressure on, but again, uh, it's not really what his deck's goal is. No. Uh, one card that would have been pretty good is another counter catcher to bring up Diancy. And there we see the Ultra Ball. Does Ian have. Any energy in his hand? We're not sure right now. Oh, yeah, he does. He has uh, the one fighting energy. He can't win this turn, though, because he'd be doing 160 to the bench Zorak if he were to bring it up. Again, unless he has access to another Kukui, but I believe he only plays one, and he's used it earlier. So... Oh, no, he, three. he plays three. Wow. Okay. So if we could see, well, some you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I was very, I was extremely wrong. Like not even, a, not even a little bit wrong. Like a lot wrong. Uh, but he has just played the Cynthia, so uh, that won't be happening. Yeah, definitely the safest play. Uh, you want to set yourself up to win in the following turns. If you don't have the win now, you have a lot of time. You haven't used really any of your resources. You still have, I think, two Guzma left. You have two Custom Catcher left. Uh, it's looking pretty dominant from Ian's yeah. side of the field right now. Yeah, it's one of the situations where you don't need to be greedy and get the win straight away because you are so far ahead. You have time to just you know make sure that you actually do take that last prize. Um, there goes. And you're still putting pressure on. You're doing 80 damage to the active Tapu Lele. That puts it in range of a Professor Kukui for a Jet Punch knockout next turn, meaning Isaiah is going to have to 
heal his guys yeah. every turn. Well, actually, no. Now uh, he doesn't. For the Zorok, at least, he doesn't even need a cocoon yeah. anymore. But, but for, uh, for he would for the Lele, wouldn't he? Because that would then not be 100. Yeah. So two things now, which are in very easy range of KOs and more threats that Asaya has to, has to deal with. He keeps. You know, he can do some explosions. He can do acerolas, but I just don't know if he has access to any more. Yeah, and one card that's been missing from Isaiah's side of the field is the Lysander Lab Stadium. Uh, Ian playing three Brooklyn Hill, just naturally winning the stadium war, as we call it. Yes, yeah, so, so the Brooklyn Hill will always be the last one that stays, even if uh, he, even if Ian plays the Brooklyn Hill first, for example, and then Isaiah counters with the Lysander Labs because he only plays two again. Yeah, that stadium war is always, pretty much almost always going to be in Ian's favor. And now, granted, that's different if. Isaiah's deck does what it does and resource management, trade, do all that stuff, but he's put, uh, there was so much pressure put on him that that's never really his game plan. No, it, it, it can't be because uh, if he at any point does, uh, especially now, if he does resource management, Ian just fetches Kakui and wins the game because he only has one prize left to take. It's, uh, yeah, there's another crushing hammer, another important one. It's going to be, no, that is a Tails. Oh, no. He does have access to a Plumeria in his hand as well as a custom cat or counter catcher. <laughs> See, I'm telling you. Yeah. That's uh, looks like Plumeria is going to be the play. But that'd be pretty much every card that he has in his hand other than the double colorless. Yeah, it would. Plumeria discards the fighting energy. Does he play the count the yeah counter catcher? No, I got it right first time. Yeah. Here. Yeah, discard retreat into the fresh Zora rock. Oh, ops, not okay. Uh, taking away the straight route to victory for Ian by yeah. knocking out that Alolan Vulpix. But it looks, the way he's playing, he has to have Guzma in his hand. Yeah. Th 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 yeah. yeah, and there's the Tapu Lele for the Guzma. Basic fighting energy on the active, taking the knockout on that Zorark GX. A quick 2-0 victory. Yeah, absolutely. A very, very impressive victory there from from uh, Ian's side, just really showing the power of the, the Buzzwall deck uh, and just why why even now it's still such a strong contender. Yeah, uh, first time we saw this variant, uh, we saw Buzzwall, Lycanroc, a little Nine Tails, uh, and it was a little, it stumbled a little bit, kind of maybe too much going on. This is a more streamlined version with Custom Catcher being some of the MVP here. Custom Catcher, man, who would have who would have thought it? Like, it's a. Uh, who knows, playing cards which have like, you know, two different effects if you play two of them.